Hello, my name is Cedric. I'm a 20-year-old trainee at Interactive GmbH Kerpen. I started my career with Plone around one year ago. About half a year ago, I volunteered in a meeting to take a closer look at the online automation service Zapier. After a while, I noticed the great potential such a tool brings with it. A little later, I went to our CEO to briefly present my research results. He was enthusiastic and asked me to look for alternatives because Zapier is unfortunately not free and not open source. Well, here's what I found. I found Nathan. Nathan, the open source self-hosting and free automation solution. Nathan makes it possible for you to easily combine hundreds of interfaces from external providers such as Google, Microsoft, GitHub and many more. And all of this just in one application. A simple example to describe the strength of Nathan would be a ticket system. You know, when one customer writes an email, the other customer reports a problem via Slack or simply calls on the phone. It's hard to keep track on things here. There are two very simple solutions. Force the customer to use our in-house ticket system or simply do it all in a proper way. Use Nathan. Have you received an email with a change request? No problem. Nathan has already created a ticket. A customer wrote a ticket completely wrong? No problem, they already got informed about it. Have you been to a meeting and missed an important phone call? Well, what do you think? Exactly, you have already received a notification on the messenger of your choice. Nathan has an incredible range of potential and it's growing all the time. In the following part, I will show you how Nathan is structured and how a non-computer scientist can use the tool. The Plone Node. I will now show in more detail how it works and use an example to show how to work with it. I will use the Plone Node to ensure that a copy of a Plone document is automatically updated in Google Drive. First, we create the new workflow. Let's just call it plone slash docs sync. Now let's think about what we need. In the end, the Google Docs document should be updated by executing the workflow. For example, if we change the description of the plone document and then execute the workflow, the Google Docs document should also change automatically. This means that our workflow consists of three nodes. The first node reads our Plone document, the second node reads our Google Doc document and finally the third node which then updates the Google Doc document. Let's first create the three nodes. If you are wondering why we need two Google Doc nodes, we need the second Doc node to read out the description before the automatic update of the Google Doc document and pass it on the other Doc node as a selector. Now, after we've got all the nodes, we have to set them up. Let's start here with the Plone node. If we open the node, the model opens again. The traditional is asked here. I've already created a few here, but let's go to create a new one anyway. Another model opens, in which we now simply enter the login data, which we also use to log in to our Plone site. By the way, there is a small requirement for using a Plone node. You simply need to install the REST API that Plone brings with it. Now we close the model and continue. The next steps are actually already self-explanatory. I will just fill in the fields. As you can see, a whole range of function is already supported. For example, in this version of the Plone node, I also have the options of addressing the company's own content types, here called tiles. But enough about that. Now that I have filled in all the fields, I will test the workflow directly. As we can see, the workflow can already be executed, but it still throws errors into the Google Docs node. However, our Plone node works fine as we can see. Here we see the result, our Plone document. Let's leave the Plone node settings and open the first Google Docs node. 
It looks a little different here. But don't worry, there is an extensive documentation for each individual node. The first thing we do here is also fill in the conditionals. I have already created a Google account for this, according to the given instructions. We have in mind that the node should read our Google Doc document, in order to later have a selector for the other Google Doc node. By the way, you can have any number of nodes in your workflow, so complex automations with an infinite number of interfaces are also possible in Nathan. Now that we have also set up this node, we will test our workflow again. Here is the result, which does not say much at first, since Google is a very complex system. Now we come to our last node. This is where it gets interesting again, exactly as I fill in the fields for the other nodes. However, there's a difference here in the fields. New text and old text. Here we'll read out the results of the other nodes and set some of them as a value. With the old text, we set the value that describes the description. We get this from the other Google Docs node. With the new text, we simply take the description of the Plone document, which we get through our Plone node. Now let's take a look at our Google document. Here we see the same description that our Plone document has. If we now change the description of our Plone document and execute the workflow again, the description of our Google Docs document will also have changed. Let's test it out. Great, it worked. For example, there is a Chrome node, which executes the workflow every x time, or maybe we say every x minute or hour. But even that is not an optimal solution. Nathan offers another node, it calls the webhook node. This ensures that the workflow is executed when the link is called up. So after you hear this, we come back to Plone. Plone offers an extensive event system to which you can add custom actions with a few lines of code. For example, the action get the link. The workflow would be 100% automated by adding such an event in Plone. At this point, I would like to quickly address a better option than a Plone event. The nodes in Nathan are divided into two main categories, actions and triggers. So why not also have a Plone trigger node? There is no reason. A Plone trigger node will also be possible. First of all, however, I will finish the normal Plone node. As you have probably noticed, I'm not present at the moment because I'm still in my training and unfortunately I have school. But in order to still be able to answer possible questions, I will now show my email address here. If you have any questions about Plone and Nathan, please write to me here. So now we come to our last point. How can you get the Plone node? I'm currently working on this project a few hours a week. There has already been great process and new functions are constantly being added. However, I will still need some time until the Plone node is ready and all functions currently supported by the Plone REST API are available. If you are interested in using the Plone node, it will be available in the Nathan standard in the future. That would be all. I thank you for participating in my lecture. Hopefully I was able to convey to you the great potential of the cooperation between Plone and Nathan. I'm Cedric Meis, an employee of Interactive GmbH Kerpen and I wish you a nice day.